All right, Bob, many thanks for speaking with us. You've just reported your first uh, full year results, and that is the first time you've been in charge for a complete year. Do you think the, those results are representative of your kind of leadership style? I don't think it's so much about leadership style. I think we were the first half of the year, we were impacted by a number of external factors, largely the, the value of the shilling, inflation, price of fuel, and stuff like that, which give us a hard time. Uh, the second half, the rest of the management team and I, we kind of buckled down. We dealt with some of the issues, largely around cost management, and we continued to drive the revenue. But the significant thing we did in the second half was, of course, we readjusted the price, really to reflect the increased cost that we were facing. So overall, what's driving the business right now? Uh, data driving the business. You know, voice, surprisingly, a lot of people had given up on voice. And a year or so ago, people were talking about voice as being, you know, commoditized was the word they used. But we've shown in the second half that actually voice has grown. And customers have also grown. So we've grown, we've added an extra 11%. So 2 million new customers came onto the network in the year. So voice still has a lot of life left in it. We've still seen an increase in ARPU, uh, average revenues per user. Uh, but data is coming up rapidly behind it to fill whatever gap in growth we uh, will see in voice as we go forward. And you've had to almost change what kind of data offering you give. The unlimited uh, offer you had said, you said was not, uns was not sustainable. And how is, what is the new data offering like? But what we found was the quality of the service was coming down. And particularly when I got to, it was around the Easter weekend, I was noticing more and more people were complaining, largely on Twitter, uh, that their data speeds were slowing up quite significantly. So when we looked at it, we discovered that there's 1% of our users who are using 7 to 4% of our data capacity. So we're having to throw more and more money, more and more investment into data to build the capacity right. to meet what 1% of users were doing. And, you know, at its peak, I think one user used 35 gigs of data in one day. One user? So, yeah. So we then throttled it. Customers didn't like throttling. Right. And, and ultimately, you know, we, we have to run the business not just for, for delivering good quality of service for customers, but also to make sure that the thing is profitable. The other side, voice, there's all this debate right now about the oncoming reduction in the mobile termination rates, and you're one of the companies that is very opposed to this. Why is that? Uh, what we're opposed to is continuing the glide path. Because we have said that the glide path was built around uh, a cost study, a cost model, which has not been used anywhere else in the world. And, you know, we use this thing, they use this thing called Pure Lyric. Right. And Pure Lyric assumes that rolling out further network is going to cost the same as the previous network, and that's not the case. So when you get to places like Moyali, uh, Dadab, and, you know, there's more rural districts, it's going to cost you more to build. And so we've said, let's have a new cost study, which is built around international standards. And if we do that, we will live with whatever the results, uh, the results throw up. But the smaller competitors especially are very keen on seeing these mobile termination rates come down and you can see why because there's this concern sometimes the Safaricom is too big, the other players risk going out of business. Yes, you know, we have to look at the, mo the, the telecommunications industry in Kenya in context. And so let me g just give you some numbers. You know, we made a profit of uh, 18 billion. Then if you look at our competitors, they have lost more than 18 billion. You know, so this industry is loss making. If you change mobile termination rates, all you do is you readjust the loss. Right. The real challenge we've had in this country in the past year is that voice tariffs are very low. And that's what making people unprofitable. It's not the mobile termination rates. So we have one of the lowest tariffs in Africa. And we also have an, an industry that's loss making as a whole. So how do we fix that? Well, you know, my view is that people need to adjust prices to reflect costs. To increase prices? Well, well in, you know, we've increased prices, so we don't yes. make an apology for that. Right. We increase prices, and you've seen the results, both in terms of the fact that ARPU has increased, minutes of use has increased year on year, and indeed customers have increased. So, you know, it was a bold step. It was, it was uncomfortable in some ways, and some customers were unhappy, but we've grown our customer base. Our market share remains you know, in excess of 66% at the, uh, you know, the last published uh, publish results. So the price war is not something you're going back to? You know, I'm hoping not. We didn't start it. Other yes. people started it. And I'm hoping that uh, you know, people can see the errors of their ways. And you remember, uh, I think you and I talked about this when the price war first started, right. and we said that it was not sustainable. And, you know, it's, it is not sustainable because the industry is a loss-making industry. 
The other highlight of your business right now is the money transfer service and PESA, which continues to outperform what everybody expected, really. How is this going forward? What are you? thoughts on the future of M-Pesa? M-Pesa accounted for about 16% of our overall revenues and it continued to grow. It, in fact, it grew about 4 to 3% year in year. And the things which are driving that is not so much new customer acquisition. We finished the year with about 15 million customers. The thing which is driving that is getting more transactions per user. The trick is to give users more reasons to use M-Pesa. So what we did uh, just over a month ago is we adjusted the tariffs. We reduced the lower band down to 10 shillings and we adjusted the fee that you pay to send that money. And the reason for that was to try to encourage greater financial deepening and you know, Kenya, financial deepening is, is measured at about 80% right. by the CBK. If you take the M-Pesa effect out of that, it's down to 20%. What is the future for Safaricom? What are your projections for the next financial year and going forward? I think one of the things that Safaricom puts at its heart is, is transforming lives. Now that sounds a bit grand, but actually we, tr we do things which make a difference. And you will have noticed in the past few months, we're talking a lot more about M-Health and the impact that M-Health will, will make. As far as Safaricom itself is concerned, you know, we're going to continue to grow M-Pesa. Uh, we're going to start to roll out our own fiber network to supplement that which we're currently using from our partners. And uh, we're going to continue to focus, continue to focus, we're going to focus on Western because I think Western, the Western region has been ignored for a while. Um, and that needs um, a hell of a lot of money to be spent on modernizing the network. And so that's the, the second area of focus. And thirdly, it's just about building capacity in the areas that we currently are.